Hello, it's Scott Manley here. Now, a number of you asked me why the Juno spacecraft is using solar panels rather than the more commonly used radioisotope thermal generators, which have been found on spacecraft such as Voyager, Galileo, Cassini, New Horizons. And the simple fact is that when Juno was getting built, there was a shortage of plutonium-238, which is what NASA uses for its radioisotope thermal generators. Now, the way a radioisotope thermal generator works is you essentially have a chunk of material which is undergoing radioactive decay. It heats up, and uh, then that heat passes through what are called uh, thermocouples. These thermocouples will actually generate electricity, and uh, essentially that's what you're doing. You're converting the heat into electricity using a device that has no moving parts. Now, in the US, they tend to use plutonium-238 because it has an entire, most of its decay chain is alpha particle driven. Or of course, alpha particles are very heavy. They don't travel very far. Therefore, you can stand right next to a nuclear thermal generator and play hot stuff and uh, be quite safe. Plutonium-238 initially decays into uranium-234, but that actually itself still has a half-life of something like a quarter of a million years. And so some of those will decay through thorium, to radium, to radon, to uh, polonium, but ultimately it ends up as lead, which is nice and stable. And basically through that process, there's only a few options for uh, gamma or beta radiation. So it's a pretty stable and secure process, which is well understood. And I'm going to point out that not everyone has used plutonium-238. I know in the past that uh, Russia, they used uh, polonium as well in one of their spacecraft. And some of their spacecraft really needed a lot of power and a radiothermal generator was simply too puny for the tasks. Their Rorsat spacecraft actually had a sodium-cooled nuclear reactor that operated in low orbit. Those uh, spacecraft, when they were finished, they uh, essentially boosted them up into graveyard orbit. So there are nuclear reactors still sitting up there. Anyway, the reason why the U.S. has a shortage of plutonium-238 is because the U.S. essentially stopped making plutonium-238 back in about 1988. That was uh, when, of course, arms limitation treaties really started to kick in. They had been negotiated. And so... Uh, there wasn't a huge need for new nuclear fuel for nuclear weapons. And plutonium-238 was essentially a byproduct of creating plutonium-239. NASA has a stockpile that it's been working from ever since then for its various spacecraft, but uh, it's running out. Uh, for example, the New Horizons spacecraft, which went to Pluto, it was actually using a spare uh, RTG, which was originally designed for the Cassini spacecraft. Curiosity, which is currently on the surface of Mars and doesn't have to worry about uh, solar panels getting dusty or anything, it is powered by plutonium-238 RTG, and the plutonium was bought from Russia. Now, NASA is keeping secret just how much plutonium-238 it has left. Many sources believe that it uh, maybe has enough for a couple more missions, but the good news is that earlier this year, the US started producing more plutonium-238 at the Oak Ridge National Laboratory. They produced about 50 grams of the isotope, and the ultimate goal is about 1.5 kilograms per year. Uh, that will take some time to ramp up to. And, you know, for comparison or for context... You know, Curiosity takes about 5 kilograms of plutonium, whereas the New Horizons mission takes about 11. So this is still going to be a serious bottleneck for those outer solar system missions. And on the technology front, NASA is also developing a more efficient power generation system called uh, the Advanced Stirling Radioisotope Generator. And what that does is, again, it uses the heat, but instead of having a solid-state power conversion, it uses a Stirling cycle engine to generate power. This should make it about four times more efficient, and therefore, in theory, you would need about a quarter of the amount of uh, plutonium. Of course, it turns out that having heat on a spacecraft in the outer solar system is actually quite useful to have around. So not every spacecraft will be ideal for one of these generators, because sometimes you just need more waste heat to keep your instruments warm. Regardless, there are a number of proposed outer solar system missions, and they will all be competing for the same limited supply of plutonium-238. And all I can say is, may the best robot solar system explorer win. I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe.